Hey everyone, welcome to this week's Azure Update. It's the 27th of September and lots and lots of retirements this week. As always, I have the chapters so you can jump to the update you care about the most. New videos this week. So I dived into some of the changes to Azure Monitor Logs. There's a number of modifications to existing log tiers that we had, modifications to behavior when we think about archive to now long-term retention, but also a new type of log available that's really cheap and may make Azure Monitor Logs now an option for all of the different types of logs, even those really verbose ones. So I dive into that. And then I just really, maybe a more beginner type video, but understanding what are the challenges with passwords, what are some of the challenges with traditional MFA and how phishing resistant authentication actually works and protects your users. So on to what's new on the compute side. So we have these new FX MSV2 or the D where it has the temporary storage as well uh, type virtual machines. And really the focus here is they have a high clock speed. So it has sort of the, the turbo capabilities. They have very high uh, CPU to memory ratios. You can kind of see some of the different types. It's running the Emerald Rapids type Intel Xeon processor. But you can see you have this ability to have really high um, ratios between the CPUs and the memory. So this is going to be really good for things like electronic design, automation workloads, and just where you'd want that really high single core performance, where you want high IOPS, where you want high throughput. So you can kind of see some of the numbers you get there as well. So a new option for us to leverage. Moving on. So now when we think of a confidential virtual machines, it, it's all around having this ability to keep data encrypted and the operations encrypted even while you're doing processing on them. So what now you have is this NCC H100 V5 confidential VMs that have NVIDIA tensor cores. So these are based on the AMD fourth gen Epic processor, which gives you things like the SEV SNM technology, which is a very strong isolation and protection, even from the hypervisor with the NVIDIA H100 tensor core GPUs. And both of those, the CPU and the GPU have these trusted execution environments and when data has to pass over them, over the PCIe bus, it encrypts those messages. So even when I'm doing operations in the GPU or the CPU, it's always encrypted. So if I had really sensitive workloads, this could be AI workloads, and I'm dealing with medical images or maybe government type workloads or financial information, it can always be encrypted and protected. PHP. P8.1 now has extended support on app service. So PHP themselves updated their release cycles to have an extension of security support for PHP 8.1 through end of December uh, 2025. So that gets copied into app service. Remember, extended support for PHP 8.2 ends end of December 2026. And so extended support for Python 3.9 ends October 2025. So hurry up and get your apps upgraded um, for, the, for the Python, sorry, 3.9. AKF's FIPS mutability support has gone GA. So FIPS is that FIPS 140-2 that's really useful for a number of government requirements and it's available in Windows and Linux. There's certain guidelines and requirements for how it does cryptographic operations. So normally at deployment time, I can say, hey, yes, I, I want FIPS, and it uses a special Windows or Linux node image to meet those requirements. With mutability, I can enable or disable the FIPS requirement for an existing node pool. Now it's for Linux node pools, and it does require a re-image of the nodes in the node pool, so it can switch between the FIPS or non-FIPS image, but that's now available for me. AKS 1.27 and 1.30 long-term support. So Kubernetes have a release cycle. I think it's maybe every four months they do a new version and then you get support for a certain number of versions. And ideally, you want to stay current with that or maybe at least one version behind and your pipeline support, your DevOps processes enable you to test and release and keep track. But if potentially you have some type of workload where you can't stay current 
on the Kubernetes versions. You don't want to fall out of support. So there are now these long-term supported versions from AKS. And so 1.27 and 1.30 have that long-term support. So Microsoft will continue uh, to support you on what would traditionally be an out of supported version of Kubernetes. AKS VM node pool support. This is in preview. So ordinarily your node pools in AKS use a virtual machine scale set. So that means all of the nodes follow a certain skew and size configuration. With the VM node pools, notice it's taken out the VMSS part, I can now mix different types of VM that are of the same family, i.e. I could have different sizes that are all within that same family of virtual machines. Maybe it gives me a bit more flexibility where I may have different requirements of the workloads running in the node pool. I don't have to have all of the VMs exactly the same size. And Azure Functions, so for Linux, now has .NET 9 support in preview. This is when you use the isolated worker model, i.e. the version of .NET it's using is different from the actual container host itself or the function host itself. On the database side, so SQL <laughs> Automatic Failover Groups has been renamed. So they used to be called Automatic Failover Groups, which was actually a terrible name because it really wasn't that automatic. So they've taken out the word automatic. So now we call them failover groups. So this is for SQL MI and SQL DB. Because really the, the default behavior wouldn't meet the requirements of most customers. It would only fail over if the entire region went down, which basically has never happened. And so now they're called failover groups. And what you're gonna do is set a failover policy. And there's two different types. There's customer managed failover po policy, which was previously known as manual and Microsoft managed failover policy, which was previously the automatic. You do not want the Microsoft managed failover policy. So you wanna go into all of your failover groups, set the customer managed failover policy, which now gives you full control of when to perform the actual failover based on your assessment. So just go in and check your settings on that Really, this is a must do action. Go and look at your failover group. Make sure you go and change it to customer managed. That means when you deem that there's a problem in your primary region, you can trigger the failover. PostgreSQL Flexible has new minor version support. So 16.4, 15.8, 14.13, 13.16, 12.30, .13, and 17 beta 3. I will now support it in PostgreSQL Flex. PostgreSQL single to flex migration is GA. So this is now the online option to migrate from the old single server option of the managed Postgres database, which is deprecated to the newer flexible base, which is VM based, gives you a lot more tunable controls, better resiliency options, better performance options. So when I have a large database, I want limited downtime. I want to use this online migration. My single server has to be PostgreSQL 9.5 or above. I do have to disable HA and read replicas before I do this, but it does an initial copy of the database, keeps the replication going in sync, and I perform a cutover, which will be a very minimal amount of downtime to those applications. PostgreSQL Flex V5 now has reservation support. So just like all other reservations, this is both Intel and AMD. It lets you commit to a one or three year term, so you get a reduction on your bill, but obviously you pay all of the time, whether it's kind of turned on or off. So you wanna really make sure you understand your requirements, but then you can go and take advantage of that pricing. Cosmos DB now has dynamic scaling and a modification to how the dynamic scaling works. So this is now GA. So Cosmos DB can have all these different partitions and replicas all over the different regions. And what used to happen is with dynamic scale, it could change the scale like the RUs, but it will be uniform over all of the different regions where I have those partitions. But in reality, I may have had a particular hot region or a particular hot partition. So what it will now let me do is scale them dynamically, but individually. So that hot region, hey, maybe yes, that scales up the RUs, 
but it's not going to scale up the other regions where it doesn't need them and waste a whole bunch of money. So it's going to give me a much better efficiency of my spend and, hey, not waste a bunch of money. Miscellaneous, and this is retirement time, and there's just a huge number of these. So Azure Auto Managed Best Practices is retiring end of September 2027. Use Azure Policy instead. Azure Policy has better resource support, um, better flexibility, better governance, better reporting. ACR Helm V2 retires because Helm V2 has reached an end of life status a while ago. So end of March 2025, won't be supported in ACR. Switch to Helm V3, use OCI artifacts which is an open container initiative image specification that enables the storage of more than just images and includes Helm V3. Uh, the VPN gateways one to five non-AZ, uh, end of September 26, will just be automatically migrated to the AZ version of the SKU. Um, in January 2025, you won't be able to create new non-AZ gateways. The conversational transcription, multi-channel audio diarization um, 28th of March, 2025, is being retired. You needed a special device for this to work. And so to make this more accessible, remember this is all about detecting different speakers in a particular audio. Well, now it's just an add-on for speech to text. So I just go and add that enhancement add-on for diarization to the existing speech to text. Azure AI speaker recognition. So this would enable voice biometry to identify speakers in audio, comparing them to voice characteristics to registered voice signatures. Well, if you really want that, now you need to go and migrate to something else. Uh, Nuance Gatekeeper, for example, is a solution for that. Azure AI speech intent recognition. Um, end of September 2025. With the push of large language models, it doesn't make sense anymore to maintain this type of standalone feature. So instead, use the speech recognition with the conversational language understanding API that can classify intent. ASR Classic Alerts, uh, basically 23rd of September 2027, move to the more modern alerting. Network Watcher NSG flow logs are retiring end of September 2027. 20, Use instead the virtual network flow logs, which have no reliance on NSGs, which means they're more available to more types of subnets, including ones where I couldn't apply an NSG. They have very rich capabilities, like they can view the VNet encryption and a lot more types of interaction. So switch to that. SQL Data Sync. Uh, end of September 2027, that's the bi-directional synchronization across databases that's being retired. And not surprisingly, TLS 1.0 and 1.1 in App Gateway and AFD, that's being retired. App Gateway is end of August 2025. Azure Front Door is the 1st of December 2024. You need to move to newer versions of TLS that have the stronger Cypher suites. More retirements. Um, Azure CDN Standard Classic. End of September 2027, use Azure Front Door Standard or Premium. Azure Load Balancer Inbound NAT Rules V1, end of September 2027, switch to NAT Rules V2. AKS GPU Image Preview, basically retired. Just go and switch to the GPU enabled node pools and use the default experience with the NVIDIA plugin, or you can use the GPU operator. AKS Open Service Mesh add-on is being retired end of September 2027 because the Open Service Mesh project has been archived. So instead you can move to the Istio Service Mesh add-on for AKS. That also applies to the Arc enabled Kubernetes. And Azure Data Explorer VNet Injection uh, is retiring start of February 2025. Um, they're moving to a private endpoint for private networking instead. And phew, uh, that was it. So lots of retirements uh, and some obviously new stuff as well. I hope that's useful. Uh, until the next video, um, earn your donuts.